War and engineering have always gone hand in hand. Throughout history, the demand for more efficient and compact weaponry has led to remarkable innovations. Among those is a device that's deceptively simple, brutally effective, and surprisingly portable. The mortar, specifically the portable mortar, a tool used by militaries worldwide to rain fire over walls, obstacles, and even enemy positions that aren't in direct line of sight. Today, we're going deep into how does portable mortar work? How can something so small deliver such destructive force over such a distance with accuracy, speed, and mobility? Well, we're breaking it down for you right here on History of Simple Things. A portable mortar is a lightweight, man-portable, indirect fire weapon system that launches explosive projectiles called mortar shells. Unlike rifles or machine guns that shoot in a straight line, mortars fire in a high arching trajectory, lobbing their shells over obstacles to hit targets hiding behind cover. What sets portable mortars apart is their simplicity and mobility. They're usually broken down into three main parts, the tube, the base plate, and the bipod or sight unit. A couple of soldiers can carry and assemble them in minutes, making them ideal for infantry units on the move. These weapons aren't designed for direct confrontation. Instead, they're used for indirect fire support, laying down smoke screens, firing illumination rounds at night, or disrupting enemy troops without needing a clear line of sight. Let's zoom in on how a portable mortar is built. First, the barrel. Usually made of strong steel, it's smooth on the inside, unlike rifled gun barrels, allowing the mortar round to travel without spinning. Mortar barrels are angled upward, and the angle can be adjusted depending on the range required. The steeper the angle, the shorter the distance the shell travels. Flatten it out, and the round goes farther. Next, the base plate. This piece anchors the mortar to the ground and absorbs the shock each time a round is fired. Without it, the recoil would send the mortar flying or dig it into the ground. Then there's the bipod, which stabilizes the tube and helps soldiers aim. Not all mortars have bipods, especially the very small ones. But for most portable systems, it's a vital part of aiming accurately. The bipod has a sight unit too, allowing precise adjustments based on distance, wind, and elevation. Lastly, there's the round itself, the mortar shell. It's a self-contained explosive projectile with a tail fin for stability and a small propellant charge at the bottom. Now here's where it gets fun, and a little explosive. When a mortar round is dropped into the barrel, gravity does the first part. The shell slides down and strikes a fixed firing pin located at the bottom. That pin ignites a small primer in the round's base. This primer sets off a secondary charge, the propellant, which creates a burst of gas. That gas pushes the shell back up the barrel and launches it into the air. All of that happens in a fraction of a second. There's no trigger involved. Once the round is dropped, there's no turning back. It's coming out the other end. If the crew needs more range, they can attach increment charges, small ring-shaped boosters, around the tail of the mortar round. These burn off during the launch, giving the round extra speed and distance. Once airborne, the mortar round travels in a steep arc. It's not built for speed, but for vertical reach. Mortar shells fly high and descend steeply, which makes them ideal for hitting enemies behind hills, trenches, or buildings. The tail fins keep the round stable in flight, kind of like how feathers keep an arrow flying straight. Once the round reaches the ground, boom! It explodes on impact or after a short delay, depending on the fuse it's equipped with. Modern mortar rounds can be fitted with different types of fuses, impact, 
proximity, or timed. Some are designed to explode just above the ground to scatter shrapnel. Others are delayed to detonate inside bunkers or trenches. The beauty of a portable mortar lies in its simplicity and adaptability. In tough terrain, jungles, mountains, cities, mortars thrive. They don't need a runway like planes or a clear path like tanks. You can carry them on foot, hide them behind a hill, and still hit something on the other side. In guerrilla warfare or defensive positions, that's a big deal. Plus, their rate of fire is impressive. A well-trained two-person team can fire 15 to 20 rounds per minute. That's a lot of explosive rain coming down in a short amount of time. Not to mention the cost is relatively low. Compared to guided missiles or artillery shells, mortar rounds are cheap and easy to produce. This means they're widely available, not just in militaries, but also in insurgencies and rebel groups. Of course, it's not all sunshine and explosions. Portable mortars, while effective, aren't perfect. Their indirect fire nature means you can't always see your target. If the calculations are off, the shell could land in the wrong place. A scary prospect, especially in urban warfare. There's also the risk of counter-battery fire. The moment a mortar team fires, radar or sound detection systems on the enemy side can locate their position. That's why mobility is so crucial. Shoot, move, and hide. And like with all explosives, accidents happen. If a round gets stuck in the barrel or the firing pin malfunctions, the team is at serious risk. Proper training and safety drills are essential. So, the next time you see a clip of a soldier dropping a shell into a stubby metal tube, don't be fooled by its simplicity. That's a mortar, a humble yet powerful piece of battlefield engineering. From the steel barrel to the tail-finned shell, every part of it plays a role in delivering rapid, accurate, and devastating firepower. It's mobile, adaptable, and, in the hands of a train team, a force multiplier that's helped shape battles for over a century. Whether you're fascinated by military hardware or just love learning how simple things can have massive impacts, the portable mortar is a perfect example of brilliance in design. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.